Hello everybody and welcome to Snap This. Now today is a very special video with a special guest who is a lens creator and he's going to be the host of the show taking you through on how to make a lens on Snapchat. Now this is free, you don't have to pay for anything, you just need access to a computer and Lens Studio which is a free program from Snapchat themselves. Now this video can be replicated with your own designs to make your own official Snapchat lenses that you can share with friends and family on the Snapchat application. Now my name is Carl Lightning and I help you guys out in the social media community make the most of your social media applications but you won't need to know that today because on the Snap This channel I'll be handing it over to Phil Walton, the lens creator. Hey everyone, Phil Walton. I'm an official lens creator for Snapchat and I'm here on the Snap This YouTube channel with Kyle Lightning and I am going to walk you through something exciting today. It's a lens tutorial hopefully the first of a few. Um, this one is going to be pretty fun. It's a paper mask effect for the face and I'm going to be using Kyle's cool uh, snap this avatar, bitmoji avatar head. Um, uh, the first step though to get started is that you're going to need Lens Studio from Snapchat and you just go to their site here, lensstudio at snapchat.com and say download and grab it. So once it's installed you're going to open it up open a new scene, and you're going to be brought to this page right here. So once you're here, uh, first step is uh, bringing your art assets. You can say add new, import files, and find the art asset you're looking for. In this case, it's Kyle's head. I'm going to bring that in. Take a look at this. This, uh, you're going to want to make, this is a ping file. You're going to want to make sure it has a transparent background around it. And that'll be important as you see when we bring it into the scene that you don't want like a white or black background around it. Um, then the next step is uh, come up to camera or just say, gonna say add new um, face image is what we're looking for. And that attaches this little gray uh, 2D image thing to the face here. It's just gonna follow along to wherever it's attached. And in this case, we're going to select the texture we want, and that's Kyle's head. Scale that up and make it fit over the user's face here. Gives us that effect. And if you'll notice in the preview window here, it's kind of uh, following a, a little bit weird, not really what we want it to do because it uh, continues to stay pointed at the camera. And that's because these. Uh, these face images come with a look at constraint attached to them and we're just going to go ahead and delete that. So now we can see that it's just attached pointing straight forward from the face and that's the effect we want. So now that we have that, um, we're going to come back over here and to add the, uh, the cutout effect, we're going to say add new uh, face inset and that's going to bring up these little uh, parts of the face here. Uh, the first one is a mouth that we want, but you can see under face region, there's different settings here. You can say left eye, right eye, mouth, nose, and the whole face. But we want to go back. Oh, that's funny. We're going to go back and select mouth and give us that mouth there. And then these settings right here, outer border radius and inner border radius is going to like let us clean up because it puts a little soft edge around there. And so play with those settings a little bit so we can get just the mouth. So there we go. Now, next we're gonna do that again. Face inset, this time we're gonna go with left eye. So scale that, position it where we want it. Adjust the border radius. That looks good. And then one more time. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Delete that. We want a face inset. Yes, that's right. So go over here, go to right eye. There we go. And get that looking good. Bring these values down a little bit. And cool, look at that. Here's our funny little Halloween mask. 
And so that's pretty much it to build the lens pretty fast. I think you guys can all do that. Um, the next part here is you're going to want to come up, and if you haven't synced Lens Studio to your phone, this is going to be important to do. Um, it's going to allow you to push your lens to your phone and test it there. You have different settings here. You can test it on different devices in the preview window, but you're not going to know how it looks until you really test it on your phone, and that gives it the real-world test. So you hit that right there once it's synced, and it sends that lens to your phone so you can test it out and see what it looks like. I'm pulling it up on my phone right now. And taking a look at it, I know you can't see it, but I'm looking at it and I'm pretty happy with it. So, um, once that's done, happy with it, you come up to Project Info and then you can name it. In this case, I already named it Kyle's Head. You can leave it at that. Um, this normally, uh, you're going to need to add a lens preview when you submit. It gives people a, like a view of what your lens looks like in action. That's important as well. So you're going to look down through this list, find a preview that you like. Um, I'm going to go with this guy right here. And see that it looks good in the preview. Say apply. Um, over here too, you're going to want to give it an icon, choose lens icon. Um, you're going to have a special, you're going to have to build your own uh, icon for this as well. And usually I do like a 400 by 400 pixel uh, square file and give it some, some space around it because if you just pull in like a regular size file, it's going to get kind of trimmed off by this white circle. So you're going to want to account for that when you're building your icon. And having a good looking icon is important. So you cancel out of that. And definitely do, you don't want to use the default icon on there. That just doesn't look very professional. So once that's done, you say apply. And then now you're ready for the final step, which is publishing. So you come up here to publish. Say publish lens. The lenses that we are building are called community lenses. They are free to the community and everyone can access them at any time. So you say community lens. You're going to come up here and give it some meta tags. Say what kind of stuff it is. Uh, head. Kyle. Done. Uh, you see that your preview is automatically imported, which is a new feature to 2.0 and it's very cool. I like it. And once it's done there, then you're just going to say submit. And in about five minutes, you get a notification email. And typically it's approved, but you know, make sure you follow their uh, submission guidelines so you can make sure. And then your lens will be live to the world. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope this is the first of many, but uh, until next time, see you later.